Mama's Art Kids. Welcome to today's lesson. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Teacher Lazal, and I'm just so excited that you guys decided to join us today. Now guys, I'm just so excited for today's lesson because we are finally starting with the New Testament. Can you guys believe we as Father's Art Kids have worked through the entire Old Testament together from our Beginner's Bible? It feels like it was just yesterday when we started our first story in Genesis. It really was such an amazing journey to work through the Old Testament with you guys. And I can't wait to start this new journey of working through the New Testament. So guys, please make sure you don't miss any of our lessons. As remember, all our stories follow up on each other. Now, to celebrate all the great memories we made while working through the Old Testament, I have a little surprise for you guys. But you have to keep an eye out on our Facebook page this week to see what it is. But anyways, let's quickly close our eyes so we can open today's lesson in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for another Sunday where we can all get together to learn more about you and your word. Please help us to focus today on what you want us to learn and help us to not get distracted by anything else. Lord, as we learn more about you, may we just experience your presence today in a new way. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, okay guys, now before we jump into our lesson, let's quickly jump up and sing and dance our hearts out for Jesus.
Wow guys, I know I say it a lot, but I just love to praise and worship God. I mean, what better way now to show God just how much you love Him than singing and dancing for Him. But anyways, as I now said earlier, today we are starting with the New Testament. Now, if you guys aren't sure what the difference is between the Old and the New Testament, the Old Testament is basically everything that happened before Jesus' birth. And the New Testament is everything from and after Jesus' birth. Now, we've actually already covered some of the first stories from the New Testament out of our Beginner's Bible. As remember, we looked at the seven stories from Jesus' birth and childhood during our Christmas countdown. So if you missed our Christmas countdown, please go onto our YouTube channel and have a look at it. Each video is only five minutes long, but it plays an important role in the stories now to come. Now today's story, guys, is all about baptism. More specifically, the baptism of Jesus. Now, for those of you who don't know what baptism is, let me quickly explain before we now read our story. Baptism is basically when someone is completely immersed in water. Now, immersed is just a fancy word that means being completely underwater. Almost like when you dunk someone in the swimming pool. But baptism is not just being dunked in water. It's actually a physical symbol of something that has happened spiritually in your life. Now, in the Old Testament, we don't really find the word baptism because they called it a ritual cleansing. Now, all the baptism before Jesus' death and resurrection means something else from the baptism we do today. As remember, Jesus hasn't died for their sins yet. Now, a ritual cleansing was there because people sinned and they did bad stuff. And because of that, they were unclean and were not allowed to worship God in the temple. Now, when doing the ritual cleansing, it meant that you were being washed from all your sins and you were being cleansed. And once you were cleansed, then you were allowed to go and worship God in the temple. Now, these baptisms were only done by the priests. Now, in today's story, we see the start of a new type of baptism. Now, not the one that we know today, but much closer. Now, John, who was not a priest, was sent by God to baptize people. But this baptism was not to cleanse people, but rather to get people to turn away from doing wrong things and also believing wrong things. But most importantly, this baptism was to point people to Jesus and to get them ready for him. So with all of that in mind, let's have a look at today's story. Oh, and by the way, guys, you will now see that today's story comes from many different sections in the Bible. That is because the first four books in the New Testament have a lot of the same stories because all four of them are about Jesus' birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. They are what we now call the Gospels, which basically means the good news. So, Basically, the first four books of the New Testament is the good news of Jesus. Okay, so let's now get into our story. John baptizes Jesus. 
Matthew 3 verse 1 to 17, Mark 1 verse 1 to 11, Luke 3 verse 1 to 22, and John 1 verse 1 to 34. John was born just before Jesus was. They were cousins. When John grew up, he lived in the desert and ate bugs and honey. John told the people about God. They asked him many questions about what is right and what is wrong. John told them to be good and kind and honest. John preached about God's forgiveness. Many people decided to follow God. John baptized the people in a river. John told the people to get ready for a special person who would save them from their sins. One day, Jesus came to the river. John knew Jesus was that special person. Jesus told him, I need to be baptized by you. John was surprised, but Jesus said, it is right for you to do this. So John took Jesus into the Jordan River and baptized him. The Holy Spirit came down from heaven in the form of a dove. It landed on Jesus and Jesus smiled. Then God said, this is my son and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Wow guys, how amazing is this story? Can you guys just imagine how cool it must have been to baptize Jesus and also to witness all of this? Now, this story is actually so significant for our Christian walk for so many reasons. One of them being, this story points to the Holy Trinity. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go check out our object lesson we had on the Holy Trinity. Now, guys, in today's story, we hear a lot about John. Now, guys, what I love about John is that he was actually a little bit weird. I mean, he ate bugs and he lived all alone, but his heart was good. And that's why God chose him to prepare the way for Jesus. So no matter who you are or what you eat or what you look like, if your heart is for Jesus, God can use you to do amazing things just like John. Now the cool part is the Bible talked about John in the book of Isaiah which was written way before he was even born and that just shows us that God's word really is true and every prophecy in it will come to pass. Now you guys might be wondering why Jesus even got baptized in the first place as the baptism John did was all about getting people to turn away from their sin and their wrong ways and being forgiven and getting ready for the coming Messiah. But Jesus didn't have any sin. He didn't do anything wrong. And since he was the Messiah, he didn't need to get baptized. But this was all part of God's plan. You see, the first reason why Jesus got baptized was because he wanted to do the right thing and obey God. You see, John was told by God to baptize people. And since Jesus is the perfect example of what we should do, he did the right thing and got baptized. Because for him, it wasn't about turning away from sin. It was about being obedient to God. And we can see it actually in our story. When John refused to baptize Jesus and he felt like it should happen the other way around, Jesus told John to baptize him as that was the right thing to do. Jesus knew that this was part of God's plan and he had to obey it. And in doing so, Jesus set the example for all of us to also take that step of obedience and be baptized. But I will not talk about that a bit later. Now, guys, the second reason why Jesus got baptized was because this was all a sign to prove he was indeed the Son of God who will take away all of our sins. You see, when John the Baptist saw Jesus approaching him that day, he actually declared out loud to everyone that Jesus is the Messiah, which we all know means Savior. And this whole event was also the fulfillment of the prophecy in Isaiah we spoke about earlier. As that prophecy stated, John would prepare the way for the Messiah, which was exactly what he was doing. He was pointing everyone to Jesus. 
Now guys, when Jesus came out of the water, the Holy Spirit came down in a form of a white dove and sat on Jesus. And God's voice could be heard out loud saying, This is my son whom I love and whom I am well pleased. Can you guys just imagine how amazing that must have been to witness? I mean, after this miraculous sign, there is no doubting that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, the Holy Spirit coming down was actually a sign from God that He was now giving Jesus the power of the Holy Spirit to go and start His ministry on earth. Now, as I said earlier, Jesus didn't need to get baptized because He was without sin. So he didn't need forgiveness, but he did it to show us what to do. As being baptized, guys, is actually an important step in our walk with God. So let's quickly look at why it's important for us as Christians to get baptized. Now, for us as Christians, we don't get baptized so we can be forgiven or washed clean from our sins. Because remember, Jesus did all of that for us on the cross. We actually do it for the same reason Jesus did it. It's all about obedience. You see, God wants us to be baptized. And that's why Jesus and so many other people in the New Testament got baptized. Now, for us as Christians, being baptized is very similar to taking communion. It's a symbol of something that has already happened. So in other words, we get baptized to show everyone around us what Jesus did in our lives when we gave our hearts to Him. Because guys, think about it. When you gave your heart to Him, you turned away now from your old life. Some scriptures even say you died to yourself or you are dead to sin. Which means that you are no longer living like you used to because now you are living for Jesus. So baptism just shows that process. When we now go down under the water, it symbolizes us dying to our fleshly desires and our sinful natures. And then when we come back up from the water, it represents us being born again into a new life. One where we live for Jesus. The Bible actually says in Romans 6 verse 4, For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Guys, what an amazing scripture. And to think that we actually have something that we can physically do to show everyone that we have decided to follow Jesus. Now that's an awesome reason to get baptized. So guys, now that we actually know more about baptism, Let's quickly look at who can get baptized. Now, the answer is actually quite simple. As long as you have given your heart to Jesus and you ask him now to forgive you of your sins, then you qualify to get baptized. Because remember, guys, getting baptized is just a physical symbol of what has already happened in your heart. So basically, all Christians qualify to get baptized. Now, that actually brings up the next question. Who is allowed to baptize you? Now, a lot of people will wait for their pastors to baptize them or for their church now to arrange some special baptism service. But guys, the truth is, any person that believes in Jesus and has given their hearts to him can baptize another believer. So, in other words, as long as the person who is baptizing you has a relationship with Jesus, they can baptize you. So guys, in other words, it can be your parents or close friend or a relative or even somebody you look up to. As long as they believe in Jesus, then they can baptize you. So guys, now that we know that any believer can baptize another believer, how do we baptize someone? So basically, we baptize people according to what Jesus said in Matthew 28 verse 19. We should baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when it now comes to baptism, you just always need to make sure that the person being baptized believes in Jesus and that they have committed their lives to Him. And if they now can 
confess that and they have given their lives to Jesus, then you can just say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And guys, then you just help them to go completely under the water and then you bring them right back up. And it's as easy as that. Remember guys, there's actually nothing spooky about it because it's just an act of obedience to show everyone that you have died to your old selves and that you are now born again. So guys, I really hope today's story helped you guys to understand the importance of baptism and why we as Christians should do it. So to help us remember today's lesson on baptism, we are going to do an awesome craft. So come along and see what it is. Wow guys, what an awesome craft. I hope you guys have so much fun making your crafts and I can't wait to see how yours turns out. So please don't forget to send them in to me before Friday at 5 so I can share them with everyone in next week's lesson. And speaking of sharing crafts, let's have a look at all your coloring pages for our object lesson on trust.
guys, you all did such a great job with your coloring pages. I just love to see how creative you guys can be. You guys really impressed me so much. Well done guys, you guys make me so proud. Now remember to send in your crafts again this week and let's keep it up and let's see how many crafts we can get for next week's lesson. Now guys, before we go, let's quickly get on our feet and sing one more song together for Jesus. Wow, guys, today was just so much fun. I really hope you guys enjoyed it with me and that you learned something new. Now, before we go, let's quickly close our eyes and end our lesson of today with prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for setting the example for us on what to do. Please help us to understand why it's important for us to get baptized. And please work in our hearts if you want us to take that step of obedience if we haven't done so already. Please help us to live lives that are pleasing to you in every way. We just love you so much, Jesus. And we just want to thank you for reminding us again that you died for us to save us from our sins. Thank you for the price that you paid. Help us now to show the world out there that you are the Son of God that takes away all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So guys, that's now all for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you guys have a great week to come. Bye everyone.